And so to the 85th Milan San Remo, 1994. And again, the weather is beautiful, but look at the palms there. The wind is blowing very strongly indeed. And so this the first of a revamped World Cup competition, now including 10 races this year. And the race over the usual distance, 294 kilometers, going down to San Remo in the northwest of Italy. And this is the route they face, 191 riders on the start line this morning. And the route remaining exactly the same as it has for the past few years, joining the coast and then running right down the Tyrrhenian Sea into San Remo. And the riders looking a little bit bored before the start today. There's Mr. Torriani, who's been one of the most famous personages in the world of cycling over the past many years. I wouldn't like to say how many years, but he's still one of the most revered organizers in the world. The longest classic on the world calendar and the first World Cup points at stake. 50 points for the winner. A lot of new colours on the peloton this year, as we see to the just off our camera, the Lotto team colours are red and black now. We still have the Lamprey team, but the new team, the Palti team, is a multicoloured jersey. And on that team, Gianni Bugno and Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov. The neutralised rollout away from the centre of Milano before the riders get underway and then begin their long trek south. Always takes around 7 hours 15 to 7 hours 30 minutes the ride. And it really gets underway when you get down to the first big climb of the Paso Torcino at 143 kilometers covered. Now we're 55 kilometers from the finish and a small group of three riders not very far ahead of the field. 34 miles to go and again the riders saving best till last. Fabio Roscioli, Carlo Bowmans, former champion of Belgium, Franz Massen, former champion of Holland, Roscioli, the man that won the stage of the Tour de France last year in that marvellous long, long breakaway. A little bit of a bore to watch because he was away for more than 200 plus kilometres, but in the end he won and it was a very nice result for him indeed. An awful lot of riders from the original 191 are still in this peloton. I would say somewhere in the region of 70 riders in that group. Let's go back up to the leaders. This is Roscioli here at the back. Roscioli riding for the Brescia team. And Franz Marsen always at or near the front in Milan San Remo. This is Carlo Bowman's on the GBMG team. Roscioli promising a good season, I feel. Although having said that, he's lacking a little bit of speed on the climb here. He drops back just a little bit. And the new team, Givis team, has got all of their men at the front and beginning to chase down. And a very powerful four men they have there too. And this is now Bowman setting out the pace. No, he's not. He's on the wheel of Franz Masson. Worked perfect. Didn't have a great season last year. Their best win really was the great victory by Raoul Alcala in the Tour du Pont. Disappointing Tour de France for them. And in halfway through the year, they sacked Eric van der Arden from the team. And van der Arden now riding on the new Brescia Lat team and in fact leading them. And Luca Gelfi is on that team as well after his second place last year in this race. And I'm quite sure that when we get down to the finish in San Remo, we will find the security a lot tighter than it was a year ago after that horrendous crash, which reverberated around the corridors of the UCI all year. And they demanded change and indeed fined the organization quite a lot of money for the lack of security at the finish.
And the big figure of the champion of Holland there, Eric Broeking, setting the pace now. And he's pulled that race into a long, thin line as well. And what a lovely picture that is. The cycling season is on again. 28 miles to go to the finish on the Capo Servo. Spectacular countryside, keeping the ocean on our left. Well, it would be nice to see Eric Broeking come back to good form and do something in this race. Won the Championship of Holland last season. And in fact, he's trying to get away up there, I think. group of four riders at least trying to move clear and this is Eric van der Arden, the rider I was talking about earlier on his new team and it's an Italian team and he might well be wanting to cock a snoop at the word perfect team who got rid of him obviously he's been training hard through the winter he's not a rider we've seen attack at the front for quite a while winner of, Mal of uh, Paris-Roubaix when he was champion of Belgium it's almost as if he's tempting them to come out and join him well, he's got the gap. Now he's made the decision. He's going to have to go with it. 32 years of age. Eric van der Arden. And a gathering of the forces behind here. There's Eric Broekink on the far side of our picture. And a general regrouping by the field. Van der Arden doesn't seem as though he's in too much of a mood to continue. Just a small gap for the Belgium champion, or former champion of Belgium, and in fact that gap has been closed down now. Jacques Girand has come up in the Championship of France colours blue, white and red and the other rider who's joined him on the tack is Andres Shipskovsky new professional on the Kelme team three and one more coming across the gap and it looks to me as though we've got a rider from Carrera coming across the gap at a great speed here and this rider who's joined him is Beat Zieberg very talented rider from Switzerland and he's come across that gap very quickly with the rider from TVM and it looked to me with the riding style of Johan Capio. Another former champion of Belgium and a good sprint finisher after a tough race. So this is an interesting little group that we've got going now. It's quite a diverse little group, new riders, new professional riders. Current champion of France, Jacques Giron. You may remember he was the surprise winner of the Tour of Flanders after a long breakaway that upset everybody except Jackie Giron, I thought it was wonderful. And the rider giving his little look at the camera here, Heinrich Trumheller, former champion of Germany. And there's a nice picture there of Miguel Ingerain. Always a man to start slowly, allow his form to come gently, and he will think of being in the action. Oh, he can't hear too well. He'll be in the action by the time he gets round to the Giro d'Italia, and also the Tour de France, so both of which will be recorded on famous cycling videos for you to enjoy. Well, that's the little breakaway, but the field are angry. They've got the arrowhead formed and they're chasing them down. But we can see the lineup, uh, the, every bit the ones that we've just given to you. But I think in, well, they're giving it 12 seconds, but it's not really very much at all. Alexander Gonchenkov is the rider on Maurizio Fondrias' team who's trying to close it down. Ukraine rider, by the way, and we're just inside 25 miles to go. This is Evgeny Berza and Eric van der Arde. And once again, a familiar sight in the white jersey as the new World Cup holder for the second time after that marvellous season he had last year, Maurizio Fondrias. 28 victories, and there were quality wins indeed.
Ferdinand, the young Russian former World Pursuit champion Berzan, still riding very strongly up near the front. And the other rider we can see up there now, I think, is Alberto Volpi, up near the front here too. Well, we could almost hold a conversation. The cameraman has got so close there into the eyes of Giorgio Ferla. Stephen Rooks just behind him. And that is, in fact, attacked by Claudio Chiapucci. And another rider coming up, and this is Gianluca Bortolami who's coming up. Bortolami was on the same team as Fondrias last year, Lamprey, but he's moved teams now, and he's got across to Claudio Chiapucci. And Bortolami was 43rd in Milan San Remo last year, and had a couple of small wins as well into Imperia. The main field still beginning to wonder now because this is a good attack. A man that matters has gone clear, Claudio Chiapucci. Always chooses strange moments to attack and the team, can, the riders can never work out his idea of tactics, but there he is. And he's now up with Bortolami, who's moved across to the new Mape class team, which is a, a mixture of Italian and Spanish riders. And one or two riders trying to join them. And I think Claudio might welcome a small group, and here it is. As they get themselves together, one, two, three, four, five, about six riders forming at the front. And there we can see for the first time the new colours of the Palti team. And the man who's doing a lot of the chasing there is Pelliccioli and Gianni Bugno himself, number 191. General repacking of the field here at the front. Very calm waters of the Tyrrhenian Sea. As we gently surge to pick up the leaders of the peloton, and again, they've got themselves organized, and that leading group is going to be swept up. Bunyo following through on Pelliccioli's wheel. The field trying to get back together again. The surge is both sides of the road now as they try to reposition themselves. Lance Armstrong up near the front as well. Just caught a glimpse of the new world champion in his colours for the first classic of the year. He rode so well in this race a year ago. But he wasn't the world champion then and neither could he have possibly realised what a marvellous season he was going to have. Stage winning the Tour de France, the million dollars he won in the United States, and the national championship included in that million dollar victory. And now we're heading up towards the suppressor. Motorola driving, Raul Alcala back in the thick of things again. And the rider leading the charge here for Motorola is Phil Anderson, who, by the way, has had his hair cut and he looks about 10 years younger. And there's a little split got away there as we started the climb of the suppressor. Raul Alcala, I think, has gone into that leading group. There he is. And this is Evgeny Berzin. The Russian rider, former World Pursuit champion as an amateur, who's also come up into this leading group as well. This is a very strong attack indeed. And gritting his teeth, but tucked in nicely, Claudio Chiapucci. And I, and I think that's Johan Museo, who's just looked round to see who the other man is who's caught the back of the train. Well, Chiapucci has done extremely well to find his second wind with enough time to get onto the back of this one. As we look now, at Johan Museu. And 138 going through our picture there. Well, that is Valerio Tabaldi. He's won a couple of opportunist stages in the Tour de France in years gone by. One rider still to come across, it appears. A big effort being made. And the main field not too far behind. And there's the composition, Zbigniew Spruk, Kierpucci Museo, Berzan, Tabaldi, Raul Alcala and Stefano Zanini is the rider who's just latched on from the back. 
And he's not going to be alone here. As the other rider who tries to get on is uh, Tabaldi. I think, in fact, Tabaldi has got himself in a spot of bother there and he's going backwards out of that group. Well, there seem to be more riders than ever in this main field now. And a quick assessment by some teams realise the break has gone and they haven't got a representative up there at all. These are the legs of Evgeny Berza. And Tabaldi has drifted away from this group, so he didn't last too long. And David Cassani, number 83, there's an interesting rider to watch out for. The Italian riding on the GB team teammate of Johan Museu and a chance to play a possible interesting tactical card. And the sun right in the eyes of the riders now as we look at them. Berzan sitting near the back. And the pace again being set by Claudio Chipucci. Vinyasbrook is the rider in the Lamprey team colours. There he is. And this is Berzan, small, neat little rider. 163 here is Stefano Zanini, not to be underestimated at all. There's Cassani. This is Kierpucci. Just sits there, bangs out the rhythm with his legs. And there's Raul Alcala in third place. Alcala too has always ridden well in Milan San Remo. rejoined the Motorola team. The last three years of Milan San Remo for him has been three different teams. PDM, Word Perfect, now Motorola, but he always gets in towards the decision time. 15 seconds, you've got to start somewhere. Johan Museo sitting near the back of the field, if not at the back of this line of riders. Spruik in front of him, then Berzan. There's the field behind, they're packing a little bit. Interesting this, because it's the Palti team who are not in the breakaway and are not evident at all in the chase either. It's Onseo trying desperately now to dra drag the rest into this race. Continuing the ascent. the breakaway to the right and here's the chase back coming in from the left 18 seconds they've pulled out another three seconds it's not enough they must get away quicker than this because otherwise over the top of the suppressor they'll be charging down on them before they all jostle for position yet again for the entrance to the Poggio 12 miles to go Such a diversity of form at this time of the year. The riders know the names, but they don't know just how well those names are actually pedaling their bikes. Cassani is setting the pace. Certainly the names in that breakaway should stay away. And in fact, that gap is going up slightly, I would say. Just about a kilometre. That's what it sells us to the top of the climb. There's big Miguel Ingerain in the centre of our camera, looking around, keeping out of trouble. Maybe his form is there after all. And this is what it's like to go down with our television motorbike right up behind the riders and giving us the same impression of the descent. Spook is the rider last in line. Zenata would like somebody to come and help. Well, I can't think why. He's still a long way from the lead. And it's Raul Alcala setting the pace. And immediately, Cassani willing to help him. Johan Museu sitting back there. I think he's not convinced this breakaway is going to work, otherwise he might give it a little bit more because surely he would win the sprint 
if they stay together until the line. These descents are so difficult, so technically difficult. You saw the speed the riders break down for that bend just then. You can't afford to make too many mistakes because it's not a long way to fall, but the slopes are steep enough and the roads aren't very, aren't very often guarded here. Alcala coming through beautifully on the inside there. Keeping Kasani away and Alcala trying to go through. But they've recovered and they're all on them again as we're coming off the, the, the suppressor and the next stop will be the valley before we head up for the last climb of the race. Maurizio Fondriest who won a year ago in that carnage at the finish which really ruined the season of Jean-Claude Colotti, the little French sprinter on the GAN team. Well, he went on to win the World Cup and a fabulous season. Now we're looking at the face here of David Cassani, a really nice person, and has his moments of greatness, as he certainly did in last year's Tour de France, leader for a while of the King of the Mountains, which he thought was a great situation because he never considered himself to be a climber. And then he went off on a long escapade in the mountains as well. Into the last 18 kilometers. Well, the surprise, and he's beginning to settle into professional racing, is the presence up here of Evgeny Berzin. But the gap is coming down, it's down to 13 seconds now, and they haven't shown any signs of tiring here, so the chase behind must be the real result of some hard work being done. What an international race, but again, you see, even though you've got Polish, Belgian, Russian and Mexican riders, there are three Italian riders in the breakaway. Zanata. And it looks as though the chase back is beginning to have its effect, because that's a team rider coming across. From the Mercatoni team, I think. They're the ones who've been doing the chasing, and here they are. Giuseppe Petito. Been around a long time, Petito, but he's a very, very good workhorse. Bringing the race across. And this is his teammate, Simone Biaschi. And it looks, and there's Laurent Jalabert now, second in line here. Again being brought into a situation where he might be able to use his sprint, Stefano Della Santa. On the same team as Tony Rominger this year. Jalabert must be the rider we've got to consider if this race comes together once more. And Max Chiandri in his new colours, out of Team Motorola this year, and into the GB team of Italy, a team full of stars, full of champions. It may be hard for Chiandri to shine in that team, but he's going to give it a go anyway. He's always felt he's been denied a place in the World Championship team and he's been riding extremely well because he's raced on the American Motorola team and not shown an allegiance to an Italian squad. Well, he's going to give it a go in Italy again. But there are frankly so many stars in Italian cycling right now, it's really difficult to get a place on the professional road championship team. So the race is being wiped up and it's going to be all down once again to decision time on the Poggio. Always an exciting moment. This is Biaschi. The Mercatoni boys realized they had nobody in the breakaway and they had to do the work. Now they've just got one rider sticking his nose out front. Well, there's somewhere in the region of 40, 45 riders in this league group. There were 30 last year. So again, it's been a selection of the strong men and the early season fit men and a proliferation of the Motorola team. And there's the wind coming over, what wind there is from the left of our picture. And a 
mass of colour indeed. Alberto Eli is the rider second in line. A lot of boys are trying to get back on turns. Peter Fallerzine is there. Andre Schmil was there. A long, fast turn being done by Mercatoni Uno. And in particular, this man here, Biaschi. Well, I think once he completes his turn at the front, which is to keep this race as high as possible and try and stop the attacks because they know that if they can get their man, Adriano Baffi down to the finishing line and Mario Cipollini, they could take first and second. Well, I haven't caught a glimpse of either of those riders in this group, although I don't doubt for one moment that at least one of them is here. Into the last seven miles. Waiting traffic on the left there. That's the leading 40 or so riders in Milan San Remo go by. There's Cipollini now. Cipollini on that lime green bicycle. Happily ticking along, knowing that his team is doing their bit, and he only hopes he can do his bit when they come down to the finish. But it's going perfectly for him just now. No breakaways at all up the road. As we race down towards the finish on the Via Roma again, the old finish. Onto the Via Cavalotti, and finally into San Remo on the Via Roma. And I think it's just about now that the legs here of Simone Biaschi are beginning to crack, and in fact, at the same time, there's an attack, and that's Alberto Volpi, the rider who won the World Cup Classic in Leeds, England last year, then was thrown out for taking dope, then got back in because of a technicality and was re-awarded the victory. Well, now he's back in the thick of it. And really is going very, very strongly indeed. A member of the new Gavais Balan team. And he must be considered a very lucky man indeed, because in Italy these days, once you've found positive for dope taking, you are automatically out for two years now. And that, for him, would have been the end of his career. There's Berzan trying to get back up, back up front to be a little help to his teammate Volpi. So there's clearly a plan being hatched here by the Gavais team. They're led by Giorgio Ferla and Moreno Argentine. But they have such a strong team. Guido Bontempi, Bruno Kengialta. Evgeny Berzan is the young Russian. He's brought with him his old teammate, Vladishav Bobrik. And a couple of years ago, well, four years ago, in the Tour du Trump, Tour du Trump as it was, uh, we may remember the long breakaway by a young Russian amateur called Bob Reek, and that was the start of recognition as far as he was concerned. He's now a professional, and he's riding on this Gavice team. Kasani's got himself back to the front. This man tries so hard. So this is becoming a little personal battle here between the Gavice Balan team and the MG boys. MG, of course, have their sprinters. And Polti have Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov, although I haven't seen him at all, and I'm not too sure he's in this group. Just slipping through there with Alberto Eli. They're just rolling along again at high speed. There doesn't really seem to be a front of the peloton. Riders were pop up from every direction. Oh, there's a bottle went winging through the air there. You probably spotted it. But riders just seem to be keeping the pace high and hoping their teammates are following them. We've got Frankie Andreu now right at the front of the peloton for Motorola. Looking around, seeing who's going to come with him. Well, Andreu will be looking for his sprinters as well. And a nice bird's eye view here from the clubmen of the cycling clubs here in Italy as they watch the approach now of the top 40 men in Milan San Remo. And noticing there, coming up in the second place, Massimo Podenza, the champion of Italy. Not a fashionable name in Italian cycling, but he won the, the national championship, and he's making sure we all can see him too 
in this year's Milan San Remo. And Cassani again fights his way back to the front. He rocks and rolls there, but he's actually been overtaken and dropped back a little bit because the Mercatoni team have come back into the action. And thinking of Cipollini again. The pace is so quick now, nobody can get off the front of this group, and this is exactly what Mercatoni Uno want. Eight and a half kilometers to the finish, and here we go, heading up towards the Poggio again. And again, it is the same rider for Mercatoni Uno, Biaschi, who's setting the pace, along with Cassani. Well, they're attacking this climb like it is the finish at the summit. They're just they're going uphill and they can hardly get round the corner, they're going so quickly. And once more, the television motorbike, misjudging the speed of the attack there by Cassani and slowed the race right down, lost all of his impetus, and that's a shame. And Cassani, in fact, now trying to push out an advantage here. He's gonna go again, I think, David Cassani. Right, unshaven. But he's a tough boy. But I think at the moment he is not going to be allowed any leeway at all here. And they're not pulling away either. Giorgio Vola, and I think that's a little bit of an, a cheer on for Fairlau. I've just seen his surname go through as well. Not too far away. Berzan has now got to the front. This young man, full of enthusiasm, and has never been riding so well at this time of the year. No professional last year. And there's the zigzags up the Poggio. They snake their way up to the top. Berzan has got himself up near the front now, off to a great start this year with second in the Tour of the Mediterranean and second in Terano Adriatico. There he is. Surely not going to have to wait too long for a reasonable victory. I don't think he's ever won a race as a professional. The ever-changing direction of Milan San Remo, but the same names are holding their position at the front. As the Mercatoni Uno boys trying to keep this race desperately together so that Cipollini will win in the sprint. And you've got young riders like Berzan here, he's trying to rip them apart. Cassani having a great race up there in second place. Fondriest is also back in the picture again. Well, this new team, the Gewijs Balan team, has ridden extremely well today. And Berzan in particular, and Cassani. And following them both up the mountain at the moment, we have the leader of the team, Giorgio Ferland, number one there, last year's winner, Maurizio Fondriest, again trying to force his way into the picture. It was around about here where Fondriest springboarded away to win the race. And in fact, it looks as though Ferland is going. Giorgio Ferlan slipped it up a gear, went round his teammates and has broken clear, I think. And this is more or less where Fondrias did it a year ago. It takes an awfully fit man to do this at this point of the race. But because the race has been so high for at least two hours now, if you've got the speed to lift it that couple of kilometres now more, you break the elastic. but I'm pretty sure that was Giorgio Ferlan who has gone. And there he is. Winner of Terreno Adriatico this year. And now with a little bit of luck, and he's going to need it because they're right behind him, he could be winner of Milan San Remo for the first time. Still a little bit of climbing to come before the plunge down to the finish line. There's Fondriest. And there, Stefano Zanini as well has got back into the thick of the action. And one of the other riders from Lotta there was Andre Schmill in the red jersey. 
but they're going to have to work now because Giorgio Furlan, they know his form, he's on tremendous form. Not only did he win Tirano Adriatico, but he also won three stages of that race, which is seen as the preparation race for Milan San Remo. And before that, he won a stage in the Sicilian week and the Pantalica trophy. So he's got the legs, but he's going to try and win this the hard way. And there's the chase group, five riders trying to now consolidate on the chase down. Maximilian Chandri is there, Fondriest is there, they've got the strength. Giorgio Ferlan is waiting for none of them. He's going to have to thank the wonderful work of his young teammate Evgeny Berzan. If he does win, Berzan kept the pace so high up the Poggio. And then just before the top, he moved over and watched his teammate springboard. Just about three and a half miles to go down to the finish. Desperately tight corner, this one. Steep camber as you come round the left-hand bend. Furlan's made it first and well. He's never looked over his shoulder once yet. He daren't, I don't think. He's just going as best he can. This was the situation that Fondrias was in last year. But you know, although they, they get away on the Poggio, the gap does not grow because they simply can't grow. They can only pedal so much faster than the chase group and there's very little space left to manoeuvre. If he senses the pace is slackening, he kicks again, he watches his line, he's got the advantage on the descent now. Giorgio Ferlan going clear. And again, the sprinters are being denied a victory in Milan San Remo by a man who's taken his chance. That was Fondres we saw there leading the chase down the mountain. But the gap for anything I think has grown now. And this is going to be one of Ferland's great moments. He's won some of the finest races in his life, but not, uh, not very often indeed. The gap, as you can see for yourself now. Giorgio Ferlan moving nicely ahead. There's the peloton chasing, more or less regrouping now on the chasers. Fondrias refusing to give up his number one from last year and doing it more than justice as he leads the chase down. Giorgio breaking very hard, leaning almost so close to that wall, he almost took the skin off his elbow. Ferland turned professional only in 1990. And until this year, when he's won quite a few races already, he's won 11. And the first he remember when he became the champion of Italy before he was even a real champion as far as the Italians were concerned, but he's coming through well now. And he's desperately trying to improve on his sixth place finish of a year ago and all the carnies that followed there. Finished his season off with flying colours, the last classic of the year, the Tour of Lombardy in Italy. He was second in that. And I don't think anybody now is going to stop him starting the new spring season here with a first in Italy again. And the remnants of that chase seem to have absorbed back into that group. These are desperate moments and he has no intention of checking out where the rest of the riders are. But it should be enough. This is the site he wanted where you leave the Poggio and now you run down to the Via Roma to the finish. And a big classic victory is his at last. He won the Flesh Wool on in 1992. And we were there on that occasion. It was a great victory, but he will see this is his finest win. And he'll be the leader of the World Cup as well as we move on to the Tour of Flanders, of course, Paris-Roubaix, and then right through the Spring Classics. And you can hear the crowd already cheering as they see the swept photo brow there of Giorgio Ferlan. We're going back there because David Cassani is still on the attack coming down the mountain. But the gap is big enough. And again, an Italian 
is winning at home here in Milan San Remo. And a new team as well, 20 seconds, that will do nicely, I think. They won't pull him back now. There's the long, long view as we head up towards the line. And we can have a look back too, and there's nobody in that straight. And if they are, they're right down in the distance. Giorgio Ferland has won this race. Just 28 years of age. Ferland celebrates his birthday in March as well. But it was before this race took place under the kilometre kite. And at the last moment, he now affords himself a glance over his shoulder. Half a mile to the finish, and he knows now he's going to win at Milan San Remo, the 85th running of the event. And again, we're being treated to a lone victory. Well, we should be treated to quite a sprint for second place. Remember that Cipollini and Baffi are both in that big sprint for the Mercatoni Uno team. We saw how they tried to keep that race together without success. Because up towards the finish now, back to this great finish here in the Via Roma after the carnage of a year ago. And coming up the home straight, Giorgio Ferlin is going to take the flag and a much more orderly approach indeed. And nobody is going to stop him. It's always the greatest moment of a long, long day in the saddle when you know you're not going to be caught now. Zipping up the racing jersey so we can expect the two-arm salute to follow. As he just makes sure, as Fondrias did a year ago, boy, is he excited now. Yes, thank you, he says, this is the big one for me, and I've done it. And he took his chance well. Now the big sprint for second place, and expect to see now the Mercatoni Unu riders, and they're right there, and there comes Cipollini on the far right of a picture, and Baffi is here as well, and he's going to be shoulder to shoulder here. Baffi and Cipollini as they come to the line together, and they take it. Adriano Baffi, in fact, is the rider who's finished just behind Cipollini and Stefano Zanini of the Navigar team was there in fourth place. But they were all too late, the sprinters, because it was a win for Giorgio Ferland of Italy and because it's the first World Cup event of the season, there you have it, the World Cup jersey off the shoulders of last year's winner Maurizio Fondrias and onto the shoulders of the man who has won the first Classic of the Spring in Italy. And there's no better time to be an Italian. There is the result, seven hours, five minutes. What a fast race it was today, beating the sprinters Cipollini, Baffi, Zanini. Kai Hundertmarkt of Germany, finishing fifth for Team Motorola, and he was once fifth too in the World Championships in his first year as a professional. I'm sure he'll improve on that as this season unfolds. So, as we say, goodbye finally to the coast here at San Remo. Let me remind you, more races coming up, including the Giro d'Italia, on famous cycling videos later in the year. Until then, I'm Phil Ligget saying goodbye. <laughs>